We're asking about it in 20 minutes. Thank you much indeed. I like being a courier, but sometimes I wish you could be anywhere else but here. Good heavens, what for? It's a courier paradise, small country. Yes, that's what everyone says. It makes you feel you want to be able to show visitors everything in a short time. It's deciding what to leave out that I find difficult. But surely that's the whole point about Britain as a holiday place. Some countries are all sunbathing, some are all ruins, some are all countries, some are all towns. But we have this amazing variety of areas, each with its own character. Now, the Lake District is like a separate country from, say, the Weald of Kent, and, of course, Scotland and Wales and Ireland are separate countries. And it's a simple matter to get from any city to the quiet of the country. I think the country is the noisiest place. There's far more peace and quiet in London, if you know where to look for it. It may be a great capital, but you can't go far without coming to a park. Well, the whole countryside of England is a park, really. We're a pretty crowded island, but somehow you can always get away from it. Maybe it's just because we have over 50 million people and 97,000 square miles that we preserve the rural bit so carefully. Are you going to use that word, heritage? Why not? It means something inherited, and we have inherited the most man-made, subtle, and comfortable landscape in the world. After all, it took a thousand years to make. And every village harmonizes because it was built with local material. Yes, and anything not local had plenty of time to get acclimatized. Talking of getting acclimatized, take tea, for instance. Hard to imagine England without tea, but it only got here in the 18th century. Now it's one of our rituals. The greatest ritual of all is the spring, uh, to a countryman at any rate. When I take people round in the summer, I always think to myself, ah, that you should have seen it in the spring. people quite like it too. All the same, I think London's the place to start. If there was a kind of Geiger counter that measured Britishness, it would tick it loudest on one of the London bridges. In fact, you could say the whole of London is a bridge, opening onto a holiday in Britain. You know what Dr. Johnson said? The man who is tired of London is tired of life. And although London goes back to the Romans, it's always being updated. They seem to be opening some smart new hotel almost every month. There are several places in London now where you can eat and drink in the greatest luxury, hundreds of feet above the ground. Yes, and it's only when you're up there that you realize what a garden-like place it is. You seem to see as many trees as buildings.
Until this century, London grew outward, not upward. And it's the bits from all these other centuries that are the real London for me. I like the idea of the old warrior Nelson looking down on Trafalgar Square, onto a world made safe for pigeons and children and punkins. And like most people, I'm always drawn in the end to the river. And that's the oldest inhabitant of all. As once was said, the river glideth at his own sweet will. Yes, it glideth past a lot of present-day buildings now. But there's still a tower. Where once the king could have his own sweet will, often to cut people's heads off. Mind you, I quite admit you can do country things in London, like swimming in Hyde Park or riding in Rotten Row. But surely the real country is the proper place for doing country things, especially in this lovely country like Northern Ireland. I must have a go on one of these pony treks they have up in the mountains of Morn. We all know what they do. The mountains of Morn come down to the sea. as well as gentle. What about that extraordinary giant's causeway? What's extraordinary about it? Simply 40,000 columns of basalt of the ternary period. Come off it, you know very well it's one of these Irish legends lost to the sea mist about the giant Fingal building a causeway between Ireland and Scotland. Yeah. 
London has more theatres than any other city in the world. And naturally, Shakespeare has one of his own. Ah, but you can't have Shakespeare without Stratford. It'd be like Hamlet without the Prince of Denmark, as they say. I like taking people down there because of the lovely Warwickshire countryside as well. And I don't just mean Anne Hathaway's cottage. Why not Anne Shakespeare? After all, she was his wife. It's a small town, but it produced the greatest poet of all. Whenever I'm there, I always try to make the trip a few miles north to see the new cathedral of St. Michael at Coventry, joined on to the bombed ruins of the old one. That would be a courier's dream. A group of cathedralologists. And if that isn't the word, it ought to be. I'd start with St. Paul's in good old London. Sir Christopher Wren said, I'm going to dine with some men. If anyone calls, say I'm designing St. Paul's. She would cut out a lot of pink cathedral stuff if you did that. What about the Roman Temple of Mithra they found just up the road? Or the Roman bars at Bath? Yes, it's funny to think that Bath was a fashionable place 18 centuries before the 18th century. I think to appreciate the full scale of what the Romans did, you have to see the great roads and walls out in the country. Hadrian's wall couldn't have looked much different when it was new, just higher. But even Hadrian couldn't keep the Scots out of England. Remember what Dr. Johnson said? Sir, let me tell you, the noblest prospect of Scotland ever sees is the high road that leads to England. Now it's the noblest prospect an English tourist sees, going the other way. I always make a beeline for Glen Eagles myself. I feel I'm playing golf on the home ground, so to speak. I hand it to the Scots for inventing the royal and ancient game. The royal and ancient is at St. Andrews. But never mind about golf. It's the mountains that make Scotland. That's the wonderful thing about mountains in a land. They keep all the noise out. There can be great cities here, but there are bound to be pockets of perfect peace among mountains. Yes, peaceful. Funny how there's nothing more peaceful than a landscape full of memories of old battles. Castles like that one on Loch Ausch have seen some pretty unpeaceful times. Solitude is the mountains preserve. All kinds of local ways of life have survived the tidal wave of the 20th century. Yet somehow they don't seem to have been artificially preserved. They just belong there. Everything from those unique shaggy highland cattle to Scottish dancing. Dancing that has kept its character. As the hand weaving is too, dies with natural dyes. And the results show that there are still some things man can do that a factory can't.
the one kind of music that only Scotland itself can provide. Although, of course, they have the greatest orchestras and artists in the world there every year. A nice compact group of music lovers. That would be another courier's dream. I'm not so sure even then. Some like opera, some like concert. Well, they get both at Edinburgh. And even the ones who all like the same thing. Verdi, for example. They quarrel about who's the best singer. No, people aren't as similar as they look. Not even music lovers. Well, I'm sure we've got enough to suit all tastes. The town opera Covent Garden and country opera at Kleinborn. In fact, you get the best of both worlds at Kleinborn. The urban art of opera with pop stars, all set in a country house. Just the place for a musical wife to take a landscape gardening husband. Mind you, no opera chorus wears more extraordinary clothes than those who see at a place like Henry. But I suppose growing people can have a festival as well as opera fans. And after all, Henley is the road, and what Wimbledon is the tennis. Well, of course, people do come to Henley from America, and Russia, all over. My money, the greatest English open air festival of them all, is the Derby. It's still the way. Even people who only bet once a year have something on the Derby. And people who don't look at horses come on Derby Day just to look at the other people. There's nothing quite like the excitement of a big race. Good location when they saw one. 
Although the castle sought domination and the abbey sought peace, and it was still centered in the ruins. Of course, you could see something older than any abbey or castle on the River Wye nearby. They still use coracles made with skins as in the days of the ancient Britain. Let's admit it. The modern Britons have a problem with anything over a hundred years old. We're kind to old trains the way we're kind to old horses. Even though our main lines have all been legalized or electrified, we still preserve things like the old Black and Railway that goes up snow. or any other mountain to me. No, I think we always have no business on mountains. We're not all better than city types, you know. Just remember, there's another way up Snowden that separates the men from the boys. The men who climbed ever trained on it. However you get up there, there's certainly some kind of excitement about heights and air and being where only birds belong. You know, I've often wondered if that isn't part of the exhilaration of a modern holiday, the flying. You start the whole thing in the air. I can never quite take for granted this experience, absolutely unknown to man before this century, of seeing some famous old city all at once, laid out like a great three-dimensional map. What a wonderful first impression it gives for a place like London. Ah, but it's only when you come down to Earth that you see what variety our visitors can enjoy. They can see the active life. Or the contemplative life. They can see cables in Scotland. And capers in Wales. Games where you swear. And games where you wouldn't dare. Traditions that go on without stopping. Or just shopping. Pleasure by day, or the pleasures by night, among many faces, or the pleasure of lonely places. That'll be our party now. Well, we're agreed on one thing. There are more things to see and enjoy in Britain than we could possibly show the visitors in a score of holidays. There's as many things for them to see and do here as there are kinds of people.